This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! I'm gay. Merry Christmas, boys and girls! I've got my blanket, I've got my fuzzy socks that already thought were slippers but maybe boots. Yeah, we're ready, we're to, play. ready to play more Miles Edge or Face Attorney Investigations. We are now on middle. Turn About a Boy's middle part three. We're not, <laughs> a, we're not at the end. We're, we're not, not at the, the end. end. It's still middle two, part five. three. Yeah, and I think there are three parts of the end as well, so. That's fine. But. We'll we'll get them. Okay, there is volume. I'm like, is it, is it volume? March 14th, 11.33 p.m., Fiatrum Neutralis Lobby. They'll be like, there's another murder. Oh, it, it looked like that guy was part of Lane. <laughs> like, Whoa, Quercus Alba got taller. No. <laughs> Agent Lane. Lane Z says, Little cubs never do they know the real fury of the Elder Wolves. These quotes are definitely becoming increasingly difficult to decipher. Why does he have an X on him? Those what are his sunglasses. Paper? Yeah, but they're like they're strung on side. He looks like he hopped out of Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. He's the x knot. Yeah, he's an x knot. And what does that mean? It means that you'll never really know how angry I can get. Mr. Prosecutor, the counterfeit bills made of Bobbley's ink, they were all of Zane Fa denominations. Yes, so I heard from Miss Von Karma. But we don't know where the play money is gone. They must not have figured out that it was all burned yet. Ever since those things showed up in circulation, my country's economy has taken a big hit. Zane Fa's in financial chaos as we speak. Because we can't tell the difference between our own bills and the fakes. Set it all on fire. They're all made from Bobo Zane. That's oh. the problem. But it's not just the money, the citizens are also worried. I've staked the honor of the House of Lane on this, and have come to this land to capture the mastermind behind this whole mess. I investigated how the bills were made and how the ink was smuggled into Zane Fa, and I pursued the smuggling ring all the way here. But tonight, this is where the final chapter was written. Despite my frantic efforts to chase the smuggler down, someone got to him first. And now I'm called to return home without a single answer. Agent Lane, I... Don't start. It's not your fault. It's not anyone's fault, Mr. Prosecutor. Why are they... going home? Well, because he's basically, well, Manny Cochin was the smuggling ring operator. I have to go home, according to orders. But he's like, I want to find the truth. Right. <laughs> Does she not have to go home, too? Yes. That's mighty suspicious. Ambassador Alba, I'm sorry for all the trouble tonight. Oh, no, no. It, oh, wait, that's not the right voice, I don't think. It's I. It, <laughs> it is like... I who should apologize. It was all because I was not strong enough. If only I was able to think of a better solution. Quackus, you fool! Curse your empty brain! Heh, <laughs> you're being too hard on yourself, Ambassador. I take full responsibility for tonight. End of story. Sheena, let's go. Time to return to our den. Yes. I don't like to admit it, but there's not much else for us to do but to go home as well. Agent Lane, a moment if you- You! Wolfman and the Secretary Lady! Hold it! Objection! Pow! <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, have you got the results of the handwriting analysis already? Yup, and that note was definitely written by Mr. Cochin, sir. Hmm, just as I thought. Good work, Detective. Damask 2's note data updated. Oh, this music's... In... Oh, now it's gone, but it was in other games. <laughs> yeah, that's like basically Gumshoe's theme. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor, I put my sunglasses on again. How long do you intend to hold us up for? Hmm. <laughs> Sorry to have made you wait, but I believe that now everyone is finally here. Agent Sheena, I'd like to ask you something, if you don't mind. Yes? How exactly did you fail to see the Yadagarasu when you were in the neighboring room to where Mr. Cochin was killed? I'd like you to explain that to us. What? Hey, Mr. Prosecutor. What are you doing asking her about something she didn't see? Agent Lane hasn't touched the Babal investigation at all. So I suppose I will need to explain a few things to him first. Miles Edgeworth, I can't even begin to imagine what's going on in that head of yours. The only thing going on in my head is the pursuit of the truth. Oh, it sounds like you have some sort of plan. Very well, I'll supervise you until the end. 
Is she seriously going to treat me as a subordinate for the rest of the day? You're not trying to pick a fight with my subordinate on some flimsy guess, are you? I'm not trying to pick a fight, and the evidence is hardly flimsy, as you will see. Ha! I should have known that you and I are destined to fight it out to the very end. It would appear that way. Well, I'll prove her innocence, so let's see what you've got, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Hm. <laughs> With pleasure. For my opening argument, I'll discuss the Yalgarasu that appeared in Babal, and establish exactly who it was that Kay saw. Agent Lane, I assume you've been briefed on Kay's testimony. You mean the suspicious person in a coat that she saw? That's right. That person is one of the keys to solving this case. The person who pretended to be the Yadagarasu. Pretended? Then what do you mean by that? I'll get to that in a second, but first, I want to review what this person K saw did. K, if you could please explain what that person you were chasing did for us. Okay, you got it! I first spotted the suspicious person near the open-air stage on the Bobbly's side. I called out to the person, but as soon as I did, that person ran off. I thought it was rather suspicious, so I immediately gave chase. For the sake of argument, let's call this suspicious person the Yadagarasu. Now please tell us what happened when you chased the Yadagarasu up to the third floor. Can do! I chased the Yadagarasu all the way up the third floor of the Bobbly's embassy. It was a pretty straight chase down the hallway until a sudden turn. The Yadagarasu disappeared around the corner, so I did my best to cha catch up. When I turned the corner, I saw the Yadagarasu run into Mr. Cochin's office. I gave chase and ran into the room. But when I entered the room, it was pitch black. I couldn't see a thing. I felt something on the ground next to my foot, so I turned on the light. But then... Ah! Who's there? That's the wrong voice. <laughs> that's not I Francisca. Panicked. I panicked. <laughs> her, her accent dropped there. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. It's actually a scream. fake accent. She's just like, who's there? Who's there? What that up? Sounded really weird. My name is Melisto Mew, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, we still haven't met Melisto Mew. No, we haven't. <laughs> By the time I turned on the lights, the Atagarasu had disappeared. I forgot that she burst in. What if, it's been a day, I don't know. When Kay entered the room, the person she was chasing was already gone. Why do you suppose that was, Agent Lane? What do you mean, why do you suppose? Isn't it obvious? The person slipped out through the door behind the girl under the cover of darkness. Sorry, but I know for a fact that the person didn't escape through that door. Oh, and what do you know? How do you know with such certainty? Hm, <laughs> that's easy. Fire. If the autographs had left through that door, they would have run right into this person. Would they have run right into... Sheena? That wouldn't make any sense. Why not? But Sheena was in They would have run into Melisto Mew. <laughs> no, okay, then let's Sheena. <laughs> they would have run into Main Kojin. He's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> this is the person the suspicious person would have ran into. Huh? Hey, Mr. Prosecutor? Are you sure you're not losing it? I haven't lost anything, and certainly not my mind. Maybe not, but you definitely have the wrong person. Or maybe it's just terrible, not only with your logic, but names as well. No! I know I was mistaken, but you didn't have to insult me. Think, Francisco Miles. Didn't say a single thing. Recall the circumstances around Kay's near arrest. We did. It's Thank Sheena. You, your answer is Sheena? Yes, because let's consider what would have happened if the Yadagrasu had used the door. When Kay screamed upon discovering Mr. Cochin's body, the Yadagarasa would have run right into Agent Sheena, who was in the next room over. Ugh. Agent Sheena, would you mind telling us if you saw the suspicious person in question? No, I did not see anyone. You see? Therefore, the Yadagarasa could not have... It just means that the creep slipped out before Sheena made it out into the hallway. Hmm. <laughs> I doubt that, as there was another person in that hallway. A certain detective. Detective Gumshoe, where were you exactly at that time? M me sir? Well, when I heard Kay scream... 
I ran towards Mr. Cochin's office from the opposite direction of Agent Shina, sir. So, Agent Lane, can you explain how someone could have eluded both Wait, of them? Wait, can Edgeworth... Not Edgeworth. Can Gumshoe confirm that he saw Agent Shina? He, uh, he at least walked into the room and Shino was right there, like, just apprehending Kay. Okay. So even you must concede that under these circumstances, the door was not a viable route. He looks so confused. <laughs> Way to go, Mr. Edgeworth! You nailed him with just an explanation of what happened! Yes. I've eliminated one of the possible escape routes from that room. But this is far from over. I need to make Agent Lane aware, as well, of yet another possible escape route the Yadagrasa could have taken. Let me pray for a little bit. <laughs> I get it! So that's what you were trying to show me. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor, let me guess. This is what you're trying to say, right? Because the door was not a viable escape route, then there must have been another way out. Precisely. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, it's time to bust out our revolving fireplace wall explanation, right? Thanks for blurting that out. <laughs> no, not quite yet, even though they're all aware of this. <laughs> huh? But why? I thought this would be the perfect time. The revolving wall on the Babalese side is known only to four people. And if we use this information unwisely, the truth may escape us in the end. What's with all the whispering over there? We weren't whispering. Scared I'll figure out your tactics. <laughs> Nothing of the sort, Agent Lane. Come. Don't you cannot whisper. <laughs> is it true, Mr. Edgeworth, about that? <laughs> Come, let's continue where we left off. That smug, haughty attitude of yours. You really rubbed me the wrong way, you know that. <laughs> well, no matter. I figured you out already anyway. The only other possible escape route besides the door is the room's lone window. And since an eerie picture of said escape route exists. Are you saying that this photo captures the moment of the Yadagarasu's escape? I guess Detective Bad must have filled him in on this photo. I have to admit that at first I thought the window to be a possible escape route as well. However, I now know that that would be impossible. Wasn't it because like they couldn't open enough or something? Well, there is also the fire. Well, that's you. Now, I realize you may not know this, but... Humans can't fly! I love the dramatic... Of course I know that! That's bloody common sense! <laughs> Besides, I never said I thought they photo to be of the Autograss's escape route. I suppose not. Alright then, explain yourself. The shadow in this photo is not the Autograssu that Kay was chasing after. You can say whatever you'd like in whatever language you want. But there's only one language I really understand. The language of evidence. Very well, then. I present to you proof that the person Kay saw is not the same as the one in the photo. Was it the weird thing of the statue and the people lined up? I'm not sure if we have that evidence. Oh, um... Was it because of the... We have, we have three whole pages of evidence. Holy cow. We have a lot. Not as much as Rise from the Ashes, but... <laughs> the person K saw is different because of the perfume! Didn't <laughs> smell! <laughs> she um, smelled so bad. Was it just... Do you just present the photo again? I actually don't remember. Let's try it. Oh, apparently. Let me explain to you precisely why the shadow in this photo is not the Yadagrasu K saw. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've been sneezing all day and you know it. I do know it, because you've been sneezing all day. Kay spotted the Yadagrasu heading for the third floor during the second fire. However, the photo in question was taken just after the first fire. Yeah, way to go! That's twice you bit him in the butt now! We're not done yet! You still have to explain what that shadow is! And how the Yadagrasu escaped! I don't suppose you can answer both, can you? Shadow the Hedgehog? Chaos control. Done. <laughs> Boom. Won the case. Now we have Shadow the Hedgehog in as well as Aladdin. And, uh, <laughs> who was the upper person? We had, um... Aladdin. Oh, and Maleficent. Maleficent. Yeah. And Aurora. And that whole thing. <laughs> we don't know Aurora yet. No, we just remember Aladdin. <laughs> Won't jump. <laughs> <Big fucking ever. laughs> Regarding the photo, I admit that we don't understand what it means quite yet. Ha! <laughs> as I thought. However, the Autogarasu's escape route? Now that I can answer. You can? Well then, Mr. Prosecutor, go on! Enlighten me. Even if I explain it, you'll try to find some flaw with what I have to say. You were busy heading up the Alabastian investigation, correct? In that case, I doubt you'd have much knowledge about the Bobbly's side of the case. 
So wouldn't it be best if the lead on that side, Agent Sheena, explained in my stead? Ugh! Sheena's my subordinate. If I don't stick up for her, how can I look her in the eyes and call myself her boss? Lang, it's alright. I can take care of him. Sheena. You've shielded me a lot as my boss. But it's time for me to prove my worth. Alright. If you're okay with it, then you have my support. Finally, it's down to just Agent Sheena and myself. This is where the battle really begins. Now then, what is it you'd like to ask? Hmm. Let's see. Why don't we start with your movements inside the Babali's embassy? Sheena's movements. Oh yeah, let's hear about her movements. Uh -huh. During the first Babali's fire, I assisted in putting out the fire. Could have been a better constructed sentence there, but whatever. <laughs> I put out the fire during the fire. I put out the fire, fire during the fire. <laughs> With fire. <laughs> With fire. <laughs> Fight you know fire. what that reminds me of? Do you remember that episode of Adventure Time when Finn falls in love with the fire princess and he, like, catches on fire by trying to oh, hug yeah. her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, and then she gets super offended and tries to set fire to the whole kingdom. I don't remember that part. But I thought she did. <laughs> that probably happened. During the second fire, I was searching for the Adagarasu that had appeared in the ball. While I was searching, I heard a scream come from the next room over. Although I was in the next room, I was unable to catch a glimpse of the Yadagarasu. To be honest, I'm actually very skeptical that that girl's Yadagarasu even exists. That's her a weird face, smile. Her face is- yeah. Very weird. And that's all I have to say. But I'm not lying when I say I saw the suspicious person run into Mr. Cochin's office. Like I said earlier, I have no intention of retracting my testimony. Good. Just to confirm, did you have a partner when you were on your investigation? No, I moved alone. In that case, you have no one to corroborate your alibi. Is that correct? Are you calling her suspicious because she was in a room by herself? How pathetic. And it wasn't when Agent Sheena tried to arrest Kay under the same rationale. <laughs> yeah, you sweat, wolf boy. <laughs> and how about when you accused Larry because he was the weapon's owner? <laughs> <laughs> Not that it's unexpected for the useless lump to get into such a situation. Although I suppose it's never a good idea to let mistakes go uncorrected. I will make no excuse for what I did in that situation. Then you should apologize right now for making Chaos to be the killer, pal! That was it, she not did that. I'm sorry. She not apologize. No. <laughs> mm, I'm sorry. Oh, hey, she actually has the sad look. <laughs> it's really okay. I mean, I'm not under suspicious anymore. Suspicious? <laughs> I'm not under suspicious. <laughs> right, Mr. Edgeworth? <laughs> well, I never doubted you. Not even for one second. <laughs> I knew you were right all along, Woody. Never doubted you for a second. <laughs> <laughs> and the same goes for me. I believe in Sheena. Then let's put that to the test and see if she really is worthy of your trust. Ooh! <laughs> this promises to be interesting. I can't wait she for her to suddenly, movements. like, throw off the wig. Or something. <laughs> what if that's her actual hair and- If that's her actual hair, then I believe that, um, Callisto Yu's sister, Melisto Mew, it's not Melisto Mew, no, but- No, CCU. CCU, um, underwent some crazy surgery, perhaps. Survived okay. the murder. And then she's like, mm -hmm. What if Manny Koshin is actually just a normal guy who's ugly? <laughs> what if Manny Koshin's alive? <laughs> <laughs> you really think he's Ambassador Polano? I think he's gonna. No, but I think he's gonna do. pull like a John Ralphio and like fake his own death. <laughs> <laughs> John Ralphio! <laughs> Be like, hey guys, what's up? <laughs> I hate. John Ralphio is such an unlikable character, but he is his funny at parts. I like her more. Uh, her. I like him more in DuckTales. Jean Ralphio is in DuckTales. Yup. As Jean Ralph. No. <laughs> no. <in that. laughs> no. Hold it. You used fire too many times in that sentence. So you helped with the fire extinguishing effort. I was in charge of the police on the Babalis side, so I helped them with their work. Police doing the job of firemen. You really know how to work people. She sure does. That's because she's one awesome woman who knows how to manage. 
grown on me a little bit. <laughs> Lane grew on me in the last game. Yeah. I guess so. She's always bringing you a business card or a scroll at just the right time. To prepare everything before I'm ordered to. That's the definition of a secretary. She kind of seems more capable than Agent Lane, doesn't she? That's a lot of people, honestly. In their jobs. <laughs> more They're more capable and competent than their boss. Well, it could be if the boss's job is just to manage people, then, like, they know more about the technical side of things. Yeah. There's also times where it's like, well, it, the boss has more things on their plate, and so, like, mm -hmm. by comparison, it also, seems like they're not doing as have much. Have you heard of, I think it's called the Peter Principle? Where, mm -hmm. like, you people keep getting promoted until they reach their maximum level of incompetence. So basically they wow. keep getting promoted until they're no longer competent at their job because it's like, oh, you're really competent at your job. We'll give you a promotion to this position until they're at a point. So it's like, maybe someone's like a really good engineer. They're like really, really good at computer stuff. And they're like, oh wow, you're like the best engineer. We're gonna promote you to like engineering manager. But then your job is less about doing computer stuff and more about managing other people. Mm -hmm. And then there might be some people where it's like, well, I'm great at doing computer stuff, but I'm terrible at managing people. And then like they stop being competent and then it's like, all right, they're not that competent at that, so we won't promote them anymore. It's like, they're not gonna move them back to being an engineer. So I know, that, that sucks. That's why there's a lot of incompetence in uh, workplaces. <laughs> at the very least, she's more capable than you, detective. Ugh, I kind of got the feeling you were gonna say that. She knows more than just a capable secretary, you know. She's a black belt in jujitsu as well. <laughs> she not telling that you're a black belt in jujitsu. <laughs> All right. During the second fire, I was searching <laughs> for a, your black belt in jujitsu. <laughs> no. By the second fire, you mean the one that consumed the third floor of Babal, correct? Yes, that was when the suspicious person was spotted in Babal. Then you were after the same person in the long coat that I was after. There's no proof that the suspicious person was really the Yadagarasu. Because no one was able to get a good look at the person's face. Hmm. By the way, how was your team's investigation? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> In order to extinguish the fire, water was pumped in, uh, into the third floor via the windows. So the majority of the investigators conducted their searches on other floors. She's getting more and more evil with that face. <laughs> I think we saw that face when she was sweating earlier, but she's just not sweating now, so she's more like... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they did, but there was one person who was wandering around lost on the third floor. When the fire was pretty much out, I moved to investigate the third floor. And you did that alone? Yes. What's with her gloves? Her gloves go all the way up to her shoulders almost, and they have... Yeah. Yeah, that's dude, that's, that's an anime thing. Like Sailor Moon. That's weird. Yeah, Sailor Moon. No she one has, in real life has those gloves. She has the gloves that go from here to like... I, What's I the call purpose it, of that? I call it, it's like a weird hole for your armpit, and then they have like the <laughs> leotard. sweat. Yeah, for the sweat. But then they have like... Well, it doesn't go the over lines. their shoulder, it just goes... No, it goes like to like here, and then there's got the two little bands that's for weird. the Sailor Scouts and stuff. <laughs> Yep. So, you were in the room next to Mr. Cochin's office. I already told you I was earlier. As I was examining the neighboring room, I heard that girl's shrill scream. I didn't make it shrill, though, and then I had a weird accent break. <laughs> Upon hearing her, I immediately ran toward Mr. Cochin's office. Wherein you proceeded to arrest her, as I recall. Yes, I did. But she was totally innocent, pal! I thought we had already cleared that up. We have. <laughs> she put on the glasses just to take them off dramatically. And I thought I had already apologized for my behavior. Now the tenacious detective would be so kind as to be quiet. Ugh. I have to agree. Right now is not the time to take issue with that. Ugh, not you too, Mr. Edgeworth. But what I do take issue with is the fact that you didn't see the Autogarasu, Agent Shina. Hm. The prosecutors of this country are all so strange. Although I was in the next room, I was unable to catch a glimpse. You were unable to catch even a glimpse, despite being in the next room? Is that true? I really hate to repeat myself. <laughs> I'm sorry for inconveniencing you. However, I simply wish to make sure that you are not misremembering something. We wouldn't want you to be accused of lying later on, would we? Hey, Mr. Prosecutor! Are you calling Sheena's testimony a lie? 
Agent Lane, I'm talking with Agent Sheena right now. So I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't interrupt us with superfluous comments. Uh... Oh, you know, I feel kind of bad for him. I understand his pain at watching one of his subordinates being accused. However, I cannot turn my eyes from the truth. Lang, I'm alright. And as for you, I think you should be focusing on your doubts on that girl rather than me. And why is that? <laughs> to be honest, I'm actually very skeptical. <laughs> you're basically talking like you're through your teeth. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, I don't because think Because she keeps true. just having her teeth like this. She, she, used the, of... she used the extra whitening toothpaste that removes the gaps between your teeth. <laughs> no, literally, like... No, when she's actually talking, though, it's like... Yeah, her she... mouth's opening, but she's like... That's like... <laughs> that's like every cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that's true. Are you throwing Kay's cool. words into doubt again? Well, she does claim to be the Yadagarasu, right? And she did try to chase down the Yadagarasu, despite being just an average citizen. That's true. <laughs> Actually, she came here with the goal of capturing the fake Yadagarasu. That's right. Which is why I would never lie about anything related to the Yadagarasu. And I suppose you have proof of that somewhere. Not quite, but even without any, I have people who believe in me and that's enough. I see. Case testimony is without flaw, but as for yours... Well, let's just say I find your testimony to be a bit suspicious. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what? So, <laughs> I've had another thing, and this could go directly with Callisto You is Sheena. All right. right. Oh, boy. Every time she is silent and there's a million ellipses on the screen, you see her shift ever so slightly as if she's uncomfortable or trying to hold something back. Maybe holding back a laugh? <laughs> maybe! Maybe Callisto Yu, after, even after, like, Lost School couldn't figure it out, finally figured out how to shut up and not laugh her head off about everything? I'm maybe laughing because her... it hurts. <laughs> She's just like, hmm. <laughs> be, like, do you, do you see that too, or am I just like, my eyes are so bad, where she kind of like twitches ever I, so slightly? I did not notice that, but uh, next time that next happens- Next time that like... happens, it's like the smallest little pixelated, it's not like a- it's, it's like a, it's like a shutter almost. Yeah, it's like, okay. like back and forth. <laughs> there seems to be a very large flaw with her testimony. Oh, then why don't you show her while you see what we found with Little Thief? <laughs> I will in due time. The escape route of the Autograssu that Kay was in pursuit of? If it turns out that it really does lead right to Agent Sheena, then what is it that she is keeping from us right now? So should we do the fireplace here? Uh, sure. Revolving fireplace, there are signs that it was used. Being in the room next to Mr. Cochin's office is the problem with your testimony. I mean, there was the shutter that time, but that's because yeah, of the exclamation point. Yeah, but that's because of the exclamation point. See another one. Mr. Prosecutor, I don't see what problem you're talking about at all. Agent Lane, do you recall the secret we discovered about the Alabastian office fireplace? Huh? Oh, you mean how it connects the office with the room next door? What about it? Well... Alabast isn't the only country with secret connecting fireplaces. What? The fireplace in Mr. Cochin's office holds the exact same secret. Wh what? The Yadagrasu didn't escape through the door to the room or the window. The escape route was through the revolving fireplace wall and into the next room over. Okay, yeah, I see, she did shudder. <laughs> well, okay, but, but like, I know. yeah. I'm just messing if with you. If we see it without an exclamation right. point. Right, we probably will. Now, do you see? If the Yadagarasu had escaped into the next room, then the thief would have run straight into Agent Sheena. Meaning that it's impossible for her to have missed the Yadagarasu. Uh, oh, yeah! What is the meaning of this, Miles? Well, would you care to explain, Agent Sheena, how you managed to completely miss the fleeing Yadagarasu, or shall I? Well, that's different. Alright. Your claim that you were in the next room was a lie all along, wasn't it? The truth is, you were the one Kay saw in the coat. Pretending to be the Yadagarasu, and you were the one she chased after. 
As you tried to lose her, you ran into Mr. Cochin's office and headed for the fireplace. Then you shed your coat in the next room, leaving it there to emerge as Agent Sheena. After that, you came back around to place Kay under arrest. Does that sound about right? If not, then speak now or forever hold your peace. Yeah, I didn't see a shutter. There, there. no. Maybe it's because she has a different sprite with the hair down. Maybe. How dare you make Kay look like the bad guy when you're the suspicious one, pal? That's a l Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that has to be her. <laughs> Sheena? <laughs> <laughs> I knew it! How did I know this? Both Link and I had the same thought when we first played the case as well. <laughs> but then you, you yeah. guys thought it was her? I was just trying to be like, no, 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 I don't think so. <laughs> I'm so happy. Oh my that, gosh. That laugh. See, I knew that their sprite was the same! <laughs> I remember this irritating laugh. <laughs> I'm getting chills down my spine. It can't be. But it has to be! Sheena, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm sorry. It was so funny I couldn't help but laugh. Oh, that's a creepy sprite. <laughs> yeah, she looks like the Shadow Queen a little bit from from the- Yeah, you know what I mean? From Toy Story. No! <laughs> what? It sounded like you were gonna say from Toy Story. <laughs> from Toy Story. Funny, you say? Yes, that you would accuse me of being the Yadagarasu. The prosecutors of this country really are so very strange. Do you think you can get away with this by simply laughing it off? <laughs> you think I'm taking things too lightly? I think not. It's that prosecutor who is. Look, everything you said earlier is nothing more than mere speculation. The Yadagarasu fled through the fireplace. Do you have any proof to back up your claim? If you don't, then you haven't proven a thing regarding the Yadagarasu's escape route. The tone of voice you're taking with me now has certainly changed. <laughs> That's because it's been a while since I've had this much fun. I think I'll let loose, and then we can have a real battle of wits. For an agent of Interpol to show me the true power of her mind, it is a great honor. <laughs> Don't underestimate me. I'm not some foolish broad, you know. I know, and that is why I won't hold anything back either as I answer your question. My question? Here is your proof that the revolving fireplace wall in the Babal was used recently. I burned things in the fireplace! That's I did burn place. things in the fireplace. I'm sorry, but is this really your honest answer to my question? Yes. According to Ambassador Paleno's testimony, he said that he was burning some documents in the fireplace with Mr. Cochin. Completely not suspicious at all! <laughs> oh. The ashes of what they burned were left in the fireplace, so they should have been there. However, when we went to investigate this room, the ashes weren't there. Why is that a problem? Maybe someone cleaned them up. Objection! Hmph. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, Ambassador Paleno said he forgot to. And so the question remains, why were the ashes missing? The answer is simple. When the Yadagrasu went through the fireplace wall, the ashes were pushed into the next room by the wall as well. The movement of the ashes that were in Mr. Cochin's office is my proof. And just what is so funny? Ash is proof? Are you even allowed to submit such flaky evidence in court? You still wish to fight us? Just whip her, Franziska. Of course. Why wouldn't I? In that case, let's hear your counter-argument. <sighs> My counter-argument, huh? This really is just like being in court. Well, to me, we're simply continuing from where we left off all those years ago. How the heck did she get into Interpol in the first place? I don't know, when she went into the basement and just, like, went pale, like, yeah, locked herself in yeah. the basement for seven years. 
got a wig, got red contacts. Unless if, like, is that her hair? Because right now, with that sprite, it just looks like she put, like, a dishcloth on her head. <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> Bless you. I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, it could- <laughs> it's, it's just a washcloth on her yes. head. <laughs> That's the dumbest disguise ever, but I love it. <laughs> It doesn't matter if we're at a crime scene or in court. Let's finish this here and now. She's like, it doesn't matter. I can just have a washcloth over my head. Nobody will notice. <laughs> it looks enough like a wig. It looks like a wig. I can't unsee that now. It, right? it does look like a washcloth. <laughs> like or like a napkin. I don't know. <laughs> I suppose. I've had a lot of fun today. My grown weary of this game of cat and mouse. Let's make this last testimony and wrap up this absurd case once and for all.